Hi, my name is Callie Chappelle, and welcome to this video about pulse chase experiments. This video is made for MCDB 427, which is molecular biology at the University of Michigan. So what is the purpose of a pulse chase experiment? Well, it's to obtain the half-life and therefore stability of the molecule. And what is a half-life? Half-life is the amount of time it takes to get to one half of the original amount of a, of a molecule. Time to get to one half starting amount. So a half-life is if we have concentration, or we have, if we have number on the y-axis and we have time on the x-axis, it is the amount of time it takes, so if, this, if we start at 100 and we're going to 50, to get to 50, the time it takes to get to 50 from 100 or 50% from 100. So we can do pulse chase experiments with either proteins or mRNA. And I'm going to go through the method and I'll point out what each what happens in each step for either proteins or mRNA. And then I'm going to go through uh, details of the method. So the method is pretty easy. In fact, it's actually called pulse chase to describe how the method works. The first part is the pulse. And this is where we radio label newly synthesized molecules and we make them or we automatically make them hot. So for proteins, we usually do this with 35 s -met. That's 35 sulfur labeled with thionine, or for mRNA, tritiated UTP. After we do the pulse, because um, we're pulsing with something that's hot, then we'll chase it with something that's cold. So we'll make new molecules that are not radio labeled, usually by washing all the new stuff, um, so new stuff is not made is not radioactive. And after we chase, then we'll ask how many of the originally labeled hot molecules are around at any given time in proportion to the total. So a crucial, crucial point, and this is something that I actually had a really hard time understanding, was over the course of the pulse chase, the total number of molecules doesn't change, and, and over the kind of over the chase, the total number of molecules does not change. The only thing that changes is the ratio of hot to cold molecules. And that ratio, two things fact, two big things factor into. The first is how fast the cold molecules are produced, and that's the same number as how fast the hot molecules were produced. And the second is how fast the hot molecules get degraded. So this is a diagram that I've shown that I, I, I think is a good way to understand this. So here's where the chase begins. And when the chase begins, we're just about to start making cold molecules. So all the molecules previously are hot, okay? So I'm showing you that starting at this time, 10 molecules are hot, zero of them are cold, and there's a total of 10 molecules, all right? So now that the chase begins, we start producing, producing cold molecules, so cold molecules start getting produced, and hot molecules start getting degraded. But the total number of molecules is not changing, okay? So let's just say that this T equals 1, here, now T equals, or actually this would be T equals 0, now at T equals 1, we have degraded to we have degraded away two of these original hot molecules, so now we're only at eight, but two cold molecules have been produced. So we now have a total of 10, but the proportion of hot to cold has gone down, okay? So now, in this case, 100% of them are hot. Now only eight, uh, now only eight out of 10 are hot. So now only 80% are hot, all right? And now here at T equals three, now, six of them, we only have six hot left, so we've lost two more. Two more have been degraded. Um, but now, two more cold have been produced. So now, we have six out of ten are hot, and so now only 60% are hot, right? And now, here at t equals four, oops, I skipped two. t equals two, t equals three. Now, we only have one, two, three, four hot, and now we have six cold because two were degraded, but two were produced, and so now we only have four out of ten, or 40% is radioactive. All right, so here, what I'm trying to show you here is as hot goes down, cold increases, so always the, the area of this rectangle staying the same, but the proportions in each slice that are hot versus cold are changing. As we go this direction, more of the each rectangle is of cold molecules, but when we start out, more of it is hot molecules. I hope this is kind of an easy way for me to think about this, but um, I hope that that helped you. So now what I'm going to do is go through the a little bit more of the details about the pulse chase for 
um, mRNA and then for protein. So for mRNA, we radio label using tritiated UGP. So what we do is during the pulse, we are um, transcription is occurring and we integrate tritiated UTP instead of um, in, into into our elongated mRNA. And so we produce radioactive or hot mRNA. And then during the chase, what happens is we are producing cold mRNA. So we wash away the tritiated UTP. Um, and then as we are producing cold mRNA, where the radioactive mRNA that was being produced during the pulse is getting degraded. So over time, you have more and more cold mRNA that you can't see and less and less hot mRNA that you can see. And at different times, what you do is you remove aliquots and then you measure how much hot mRNA is left, right? So when I was talking about um, down here, right, at like time t equals 0, 100% of it's hot, t, t equals 1, 80% of it's hot, t equals 2, sorry, I said I Skip two. I don't know why I did that. Uh, Sixty percent is hot, and then here t equals three. Forty percent is hot. So the the total amount that's hot is going down. As you can see, the total uh, area of this of this rectangle that's red is going down over time, even though the total area of the rectangle is staying the same. It's just getting accounted for by more and more cold. So how do we actually do this? Um, how do we measure the amount of hot mRNA? Well, we can do one of two different methods. Um, and the first is a the first is a dot plot. So what happens in a dot plot is you have a filter paper to which you attach uh, single stranded cold nucleic acids. All right, and they need to be single stranded because what we're going to do is we're going to anneal our hot or our, our our produced mRNA to it and measure the amount of radioactivity. All right, so we've got our filter paper that we've got our single stranded nucleic acids bound to, and they're all kind of bounded to the same. So here we've got I'm showing three different single stranded nucleic acids, and each of them are in their own little dot, thus the dot blot. So what we do is we aliquot at various times our our mRNA that's being produced, excuse me, and then we pour it onto um, this filter paper, and what will happen is the single stranded nucleic acids, some of them will be complementary. To, so perhaps the single strand nucleic acids in, in this dot are complementary to the mRNA that's being produced, okay? So that's going to anneal, and it'll stick there. So after we wash off all of the, uh, all of the other mRNA that's, that's not annealing to the single strand nucleic acids on each of these dots, we're left with perhaps one dot in which, in which it's complementary to the mRNA that's being produced. And then what we can do is we can measure the radioactivity in that dot by scintillation counting or doing, uh, doing an autoradiogram. Another method for um, measuring with mRNA is affinity purification. And the way this works is you start with a bead within, that's attached to an immobilized anchor RNA or DNA. And what happens is if your mRNA is, is complementary to this immobilized anchor RNA or DNA, it will anneal, it will attach to this bead. And so when you centrifuge it, all of these beads um, go to the bottom into the pellet, and then we can measure the radioactivity in the pellet by using scintillation counting. Remember, you can do pulse chase with proteins as well. And remember, usually what we use is 35-acinothionine. And so in the pulse here, what we're doing is we're producing, we're producing uh, proteins. We're producing proteins that when uh, methionine is, is introduced, when a methionine is introduced, it is radioactive. So we've got a bunch of radioactive proteins. We've got a bunch of radioactive proteins. So then during the chase, you know, we're producing now cold proteins, but we still have some of those radioactive proteins that we produced during the pulse that are around. And so as we produce more and more cold proteins during the chase, the hot proteins are getting degraded, getting degraded, getting degraded. Now, oftentimes, if this is, if this is being done in vivo, all of the proteins that are being produced, this is also true for the mRNA, and, and if we're doing that, um, if we're doing that in vivo, all of the mRNAs and all of the proteins that are being produced are all radio labeled. So remember, the reason why these additional steps are so important, the reason why we have to do a dot plot, the reason why we have to do affinity purification, the reason why we have to do amino precipitation in the case of proteins, is to separate out the uh, radio labeled or non radio labeled thing of interest that we are that we are interested in from all the other radio labeled things. So we're doing immune precipitation with protein, and how that works is we have an antibody that's attached to a bead. The antibody has, um, the antibody will adhere to a specific epitope on the protein of interest that we're producing. So the protein will attach to this antibody, which then attaches to this bead. Thus, when we centrifuge it, um, all the, our protein of interest will go to the bottom into the pellet, and then we can, again, measure the radioactivity in the pellet using scintillation counting. So this is just another way to measure radioactivity over time from aliquots. The last thing I want to do is go through how you actually read one of these graphs and what I'm going to do, we're going to work backwards from the data. 
So here's the first thing. So we're gonna look at two different mRNAs. So the first one I've just called mRNA one, and this is what I'm this is what I'm showing you. So the five represents this. The red the stuff in red represents the number of radioactive mRNAs. The n the number in blue represents the number of cold mRNAs that's be that are being produced in the chase. And this um, green represents the total number of mRNAs. Um, so that would be the hot plus the cold. And one thing that you'll notice is, remember, over time, I just want to emphasize this one more time, the total number of RNAs is not going to change. What's going to change is the ratio of hot to cold. The ratio of hot is going to go down as it gets degraded. The ratio of cold is going to go up as more of it gets produced. So we start out at time t equals zero with five hot and zero cold, all right? Because this must be the end of the pulse, the beginning of the chase, all right? So one, two, three, four, five. Here we go, at five, at z time equals zero, we've got five radioactive mRNAs. Remember, we're measuring radioactivity, so I'm going to, the, what I'm going to show you on the y-axis is kind of, is, is the radioactivity as it's proportional to the number of, of radioactive mRNAs. All right, so now at time t equals one, we've lost one of these mRNAs that was from here. One of them must have gotten degraded. All right, so now we only have four radioactive mRNAs, but because we're now in the chase, one, radi one cold RNA has been produced. So now we have four radioactive and one cold, but remember, the total is still five. The total number of, of mRNAs is still five. So now we've gone down T equals one, down to four. Here, now we've lost another one of these guys, so we're down to three radioactive ones, but one cold one has been produced, so now we're down to three. And here, time t equals three, we've lost another one of these guys, but another one of these cold RNAs has been produced, so we're down to two. And finally, you guessed it, at time t equals four, now we're just down to one radioactive mRNA, but now we've got a bunch of cold ones because cold ones are being produced as the hot ones are getting degraded. Now, let's take a look at another mRNA, all right? Another mRNA, I'm just gonna draw a line through this so we can clearly see the trend that I'm trying to show. So. Again, we're going to start out right after the end of the pulse, the beginning of the chase. We've got five radioactive mRNAs of this mRNA, too. This is just a totally different mRNA. All right? But now here, time t equals two. I'm just going to jump over here. Now, uh, even though it's been two x amount of times, and um, just for your, your own edification, the time scales are different between higher eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Often with higher eukaryotes, the time could be um, in hours up to hours, and in, in, in prokaryotes, uh, minutes is more common when we're talking about mRNA stability. So, so let's just say that we're talking about minutes here. Um, after two minutes, now oh, we, we still have four radioactive, we still have four radioactive mRNAs, and we've only produced one cold one. So here, at time t equals two, we're at four. And now here at time t equals four, let's just say just another one of these has been degraded but only two has been produced. That means that here at time t equals four, now we're at three, and we're seeing that radioactivity is going down much slower. So this indicates that this guy is more stable, more stable because see, it takes two minutes to, to destroy one of these guys, whereas in this case of mRNA-1, it only took one minute to destroy it. So that indicates that this guy is more stable, this purple one is more stable, than the red one, and you can see that that's reflected in this graph. So when you see one of these graphs, you can determine the one that's more stable is the one that has the slower slope, right? Because in this case, the slope represents the rate of degradation of, of these mRNAs. But the important detail is it's not just that this is that the radioactive ones are getting degraded, but also it's exacerbated by the fact that, that new cold ones are being produced. So if the total is saying the same, the, um, the two rates kind of reinforce one another such that the the breaking down of hot mRNA is reinforced by creation of more cold mRNA. I hope this video was helpful. This is a pretty difficult concept. This is something that I really struggled with. Um, so if you have additional questions, feel free to comment in the comment section of this video.